Hello and welcome to the Right Click Save podcast. On today's episode, we are going to be talking about profile pictures and how they are valued in the current market. Are they just shit coins with JPEGs attached? <laughs> Controversial statement. Yeah, we're going to be looking at whether uh, what really derives the value of a of a profile picture. Is it the utility? Is it the community? Is it the artwork itself, or is it just down to social signaling? As always, make sure to leave a little like on this episode. We do appreciate it. And a comment as well as to what you'd like us to chat about next week. And do not forget to subscribe to the largest animated podcast on YouTube and Web3, the Right Click Save podcast. Yeah, so we had um, a bit of controversy around sort of a lot of profile picture um, profile picture projects really over the last not just a week but I think there's a little bit of controversy over the last kind of month so we've had Utes which have not revealed their artwork which is how long has it been now six seven eight weeks since six since the mint? weeks at least six is, seven is weeks this, is this the is this the longest um, pre-reveal ever for a campaign and to the point where we heard that they've just changed their artist um, which doesn't sound good considering how far along they should be on top of that, we've had uh, Azabala NFTs where they revealed their artwork they've been wait, uh, working on to their community and the community basically said, nah, don't like it. And they've said they're going to go back and do a better job. So this is kind of brought to light for us, for me and for us to discuss is how important is the art in an NFT? Because it used to be the that was the main, main thing, like the, the actual brand and design. And now it seems to be left left by the wayside. I reckon that it very much depends on the project. I know it's really vague as a reply, but if we give Genuine Undead as a great example, um, their project was blown up out of absolutely nowhere for the most part. They minted in August, and then as of the 3rd of October, I think their floor was like 0.1, which is still good based on the mint price. Fast forward two weeks to now, they're now nearly an ETH. Um, And their big selling point around the artist is that the artist is 100% anonymous. It's really big in all of their marketing. So I think that for for, for people now, really, they've obviously got those established brands like Doodles where they can go and get that pastel palleted injection if they want it they can go and pick up something iconic like i guess clone x as well has got that really unique 3d style azuki as well if you want like that 2d anime rug style um if you want that you can go (laughs) get it people have those continuous brands that they like but i think outside of that people are looking for something a bit different and and the reality is that i guess the controversy the reason the gods have done so well they had bitch tax they had the burning mechanisms and they're all those little um kind of fuck used to people trying to play by a straight and narrow that's why that brand is good because it's explosive it's in your face it's interesting i think people now are just not really bothered about art they're kind of being honest about it were we ever really that asked about a shitty cat or like a little monkey well, doing like generative art is hard isn't it like i think this is one thing that does get overlooked a lot of time especially by people outside of nfts to actually be able to make a collection where you've got a decent amount of variety and yet all the traits come together and create a decent looking um, picture is actually really really difficult and it only when you actually get stuck in and start doing it yourself you can see some of the issues that you come across and some of the little kind of obscure weird things that happen to your artwork if you're not really really meticulous on how you put it together and it's really really underestimated in the space that's why we always had the traditional floor name name collection. Yeah, like you had box, that box group standards. of absolute shite that just sat and just fizzles and stinks because it's ended up with a beard on a woman or something else has just gone absolutely <laughs> yeah. Although haywire. That's, that's, that's okay. It's a modern world. That's, that's fine. We're all good with that. But that that's that's always been a massive problem. And I think people were just being super honest because the market isn't as big as it used to be. People are not spending thousand dollars on a shit nft and making three the next day so what they've done i think in my opinion at least has been more honest about the fact that the majority of people don't give a shit about the quality of the art or the the the, the whatever layers or whatever they just actually yeah they want a community that bangs like that's what i think genuine undead done really well they have and like and again floor prices up so we've got to preface it by saying Every community is excited when, when price goes up. But even before that, they seem to have this group of people in there who just went, cool, we're, we're down for this. This is what we're committing to. Yeah, I think people are more interested in that now than pretending they care about art. Well, I think it's actually... Um, 
to agree with you in a way, but there's like a divergence in the market now. And that's a really good strong sign of a maturing market where there's different subsectors of collectors and investors and spenders that are interested in different things. As you said yourself, the people want to get a good hit of iconic branding or a past it palleted collection. Doodles is out there as a really well-known artist, really strong brand, a clear blue chip project. And then there's uh, projects for people that are really interested in the tech, like on-chain birds and what they're doing with having all their stuff on-chain. And that's really interest people that are actually into the tech of Web3. Then you've got the people that just want to sort of degen on Twitter all day. And that's where the community is really key for those. And the kind of projects they're going to invest in a community where they've got people to sit and chat to. And there's going to be lots of invite in real life events. And then there's the expensive ones that people might buy and stylish and fashionable that might buy for social signaling that they can use to show status. So the, as the market matures, we've got, I think, rather than it all just being about hype and making money, you've now got people more exploring their interests. Yeah, sure, everyone still wants to make money, uh, but I think we're definitely maturing as a market. I think the other thing is people want something for their money now a lot more than they did before because we we, we did exist in this weird stipulation bud, bubble where um, the rule was very simple. I make project, you buy project, we all make a bit of money and then someone's the exit liquidity because they are greater yeah. fool than me, right? But for the most part, it was a pretty tried and tested method. You could buy something on d- at day one and if, if day three came around, you'd probably make money. Because that's no longer a thing and we're now in this status of people want stuff you know again we've talked about so many different little brands but where they have direct utility you get instantly i think floor the app's a really good example right you buy their nft and you get access to just to start with a wallet tracker so it'll give you all the different iterations of what you want on a clean ui but you're also going to get all the other stuff they're working on too but you get that straight away you haven't got to wait six eight twelve fifteen months but there still are products like Alluvium and the other ones we've chatted about recently where they they do something long term and you can buy into that if you're interested. People, as you said, really are working out, okay, cool, I'm not going to make a million pounds of a night right now. What I can do is educate myself on this technology or educate myself on the part of the technology, the branch, the arm, the, whatever you want to call it, that I like. So if you're into the tech, like you said, on, on-chain birds works because you get that on-chain side of it. If you're into um, trying to find a community, something like the undead makes sense people are looking for things they care about a bit more than they were a year ago it leads quite nicely this actually on it it wasn't something i thought about before us chatting about this on this recording but the whole thing did you see the news about decentraland this week about their active yeah. users so yeah, talking do. about utility being a key thing for people who invest at the moment what utility have you used out of any of your nfts just off the top of your head right now it's a great question and the harsh reality is apart from having to fly around the world to go to con- to con- conventions where I've still had to pay through the nose for beers and everything else I haven't had yeah. um, anything that isn't community manufactured from any That's NFT what I was say. It's access to the community but in terms of actual raw utility there's not a lot of anything that anyone's sort of taken advantage of and done I'm sort of racking my brain right now Metabrew is, Metabrew is, is obviously a, a, an awesome caveat to this where it's uh, it's like an NFT that's backed by a real real world asset. So there's there's definite utility there. And hopefully everyone who's holding it is claiming, claiming their beers. But yeah, the news on Decentraland was that they had, and it was probably false news and they've Decentraland have, um, have objected to it, that they had 38 active members. <laughs> like, I thought it was 31. 38 people and maybe 31. Uh, they've come back and said, actually, it's 8,000. We're amazing. But um, even 8,000, if you compare it to it, to a game is sort of kind of ludicrously low for a game that a company that's like valued at sort of 1.2 billion. Um so I just think, like, if we're now saying utility is the big value in the in the space, it's like, yeah, but when am I going to see a lot of people using it? I think that's why storytelling blew up over the last couple of weeks as well, because that is a utility that people are getting involved in, but it's not for everyone, um, and it is a subsect. And this is what, again, I was talking about, the maturing market. We're seeing much more of these little hype spikes in sort of little subsects of the, of the NFT community now. Massive caveat to that as well is, um, I've been banging the drum for whatever you want to phrase it as storytelling NFTs for, for the entire time we've done the podcast because my goal was to find IP that I could resonate with, right? That was literally what I wanted. Um, from it is, just being super honest with you, uh, whilst there are going to be incredibly creative people in this space who can conjure up something incredible, the average Twitter user, Web3 user, isn't going to create 
IP that I want to engage with. And that's not because it won't be good or all right. It's just simply put, I can go and watch like Brassic, Sky One TV show, (laughs) amazing comedy, right? Created by years of talent that I know is fucking brilliant. I'll go watch that. And that costs me 10 quid to have an hour TV subscription. I haven't got to go and buy a thousand dollar NFT and wait 10 years. So the problem that we've got is this time sink, which people are becoming more and more aware of. And I think it's the big problem with music NFTs. I listened to a really, really good space where a guy who was in the know um, had worked with artists who were interested in it. The reality is there's definitely an opportunity for people to make money in that space. If, for example, I am an indie artist, I have a small core of people who want to support me. For the average artist, it's never going to work. Yeah, why would they diverge so much of their market share from an audience that gets how to listen to their music on Spotify to a tiny percentage that understand Web3 and are willing to spend loads yeah. of money? That the point That's we, the problem we, we, I've always had with it. Yeah, and the point we're kind of getting at throughout this entire episode is very simple. NFTs are evolving because they have to, because people are no longer making money at a stupid pace yeah. that makes it all easy to cover up. So now we've got rid of the money cover and we're dealing with the actual physical, okay, but what do these things do? People are clocking on to the fact that just having a profile picture doesn't really make a difference. And I spoke to JF about his golden ape, and I just asked him straight up, like, bottom line is, if you didn't have your golden ape tomorrow, I know you like it, I know you want it, I know, you, blah, 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 say you got taken in a hack, right? And you'd be really fucked off because you'd lost the money on it. But, like, would, would it be the end of the world? And he was super, he said, no, not really. It's, it, it is my symbol, it means me, but you know? And I think that's where people are now. I think they've realized that actually having a profile picture is fine but then like you said recently on a call we were on um you look at a lot of board ape holders and a lot of punk buyers have used those specific nfts to scam people because it buys yeah. trust yeah. so then you don't trust them as much as you should it's, it's well it's like now i've got my doodle cycle. i um you can go on nft inspect you can see other people that are using your your uh your doodle or whatever nft you have as their profile picture so i keep messaging them and being like hey man <laughs> Nice, nice profile picture. Um, I did love one today, and he's he's changed it to someone else's doodle. Um, but just because it gives you that kind of validation. Um, but just to swing back slightly on the, what we're saying about music NFTs, is I couldn't get my head around about music NFTs at all. But I think it's never going to work for, for, in my opinion. And please prove me wrong, industry. But I don't think it will ever work for actually music tracks. I think it's only ever going to be work for like artist in terms of musical artist NFTs, a way to further connect and have access to weird other things that like the main sort of demographic doesn't really want or need they just want to listen to the music but then you've yeah. got something for the super fans like for example carly riley if you if um Taylor Swift, swifty you know. brought out a uh, an nft collection it wouldn't necessarily be of her music but some sort of access and way of communicating and engaging with with an artist that she she, she loves so much i'm sure that carly would be all over that the the big thing that came out of that space again i'm not too clued up on music nfts beyond my common sense which could be way off i think we share the same opinion they were just saying that there's such a huge grip that the traditional music industry has on artists forget about whether it even makes sense for them to try blockchain technology the grip that the um industry has on and the bottom line is the amount of money they make off of it um i think they were saying that jay-z did a 38 show tour and only made 275 grand off of 38 shows you think how big jay-z is that's a tiny amount that's of money crazy. Um, because of the the grip that his brand label his, his brand has on him so how on earth day, is that ever going to work back in the day people would go out and like they would have a record and they would get a, multiple copies just because of like the different artwork or the slightly different yeah. press or a different thing and i think it's those super fans that nfts cater for it's not for the wider demographic it's the as you would say that thousand super fans that you can have that that will just buy everything that you put out and they will love it because they feel like they've connected on a on an extra level with someone that they they adore and really love their work the only way music nfts work is if someone makes an only fans esque platform and originally only fans was supposed yeah. to be not just not suitable for work content it was supposed to be if you were a fan you could pay a subscription or a payment price like yeah. the side men have is side how men we plus. announce our new right click save only fans page i will be getting my breasts out if yeah. oh, you guys want to know but yeah so that that's what i think is is the reality of of that side of of, of the the market but we've again, kind of, it, diverged a bit here haven't we into into music nfts but but um, but, it, but it's, it's the wider conversation of what is it and what do we need art in nfts and i think the answer for profile pictures is yes you do need it you know if you want to build a brand obviously you need 
something to be recognised. You've noticed instantly since you've changed your persona to your doodle, you, you've noticed a huge uptick in your engagement yeah, and, and people reaching dudes. out to chat. And generally, stuff has been a lot easier, right? Yeah, it helps. Um, so in that sense, you're trying to build a brand 100%. But for someone trying to make money off of a collection or be part of a community, I don't think it's as necessary yeah. anymore. Yeah. Now that big bubble's gone. So I think the main conclusion on this is that NFTs are now getting their values based on different things rather than just hype and they have different values to different people in the space based on what their own personal interest is and I think that is going to be really interesting to see over the next few months hopefully and not 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 years how this develops and how this kind of more uh, pioneers and range finds the actual value of NFTs which is something that is that we're exploring and will be continuing to explore over the next couple of years and it's going to be profitable for a lot of people it's going to be really painful for a lot of people that's uh again okay, we'll kind of wrap it up here but that's something carly's spoken about quite a few times on her podcast as well is that actually i don't think things have been overpriced i mean pardon me people things haven't been priced correctly they've been overpriced and just because they've existed for x amount of time doesn't mean that they're going to become rare or valuable just because of their existence time um, and I think that really does feed into the fact that, simply put, a lot of shit is overpriced. A lot of things did get gimmick factor and a lot of benefit of being early. But the reality is now people are less and less interested in being able to flex a profile picture to people who no longer care or have left or whatever. Oh, I, I'm well on flexing my doodle at the moment. How many collections can you really flex? Is is kind of the open-ended question. Doodles is the one. I, I've just, I like, I no offense to board ape holders, love board apes, love the project, love Yuga, uh, love it, I'm good friends with a lot of uh, ape holders, but it just doesn't hit like it used to. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I wouldn't mind an airdrop of someone's ape if they've got a spare. Yeah, I'll actually, to be fair, if, if I would like an ape. <laughs> but yeah i think i think it's been good to start the discussion we are going to be doing these weekly episodes as always uh unbelievably due to the fact they're weekly every week um oh and God. they're going to be back on spotify which is brilliant news because we've had an inundation of messages we've been inundated my apologies messages saying please get it back on spotify we want to be able to listen and not have to watch this horrible animation that's fine yeah, we'll oblige fine. i'll do um, it <laughs> Again, like I said, so I'm not sure where we're at guest-wise, but it should be, I think, Alexander Shin and Villain's episode coming out next. Yeah, we've got Alfie Motion as well. We've got to go for Sappy Seals. We did a recording with JF. We've got a lot of recordings in the bank, and we're just going to try and fly them out as quick as we can um, from, from the end of next week. It's been an absolute pleasure, Jimmy. As always, we've been yeah. your hosts, Jimmy T and Calcio, over at the Right Click Say podcast. Make sure you do comment below who you'd like to see on next week's Put episode. A comment down. Drop a couple of little likes, and more importantly, anything yeah. else, Tick subscribe it. to the biggest podcast, animated podcast, my apologies, in Web3. The best animated podcast in Web3. And the best. The biggest and the best. Biggest. And number one. Any. No one else is doing it. I can't, because they're not, they're not stupid enough to do it every week. Have a good day. 